And now, the LSU Football Fix with Preston Guy. Presented by Tiger Bait. Starts now. And welcome on in to your LSU Football Fix. Back at our normal time on our normal night. Monday nights at 8 o'clock with our normal co-host, Zach Nagy. We're all back at our normal times. There's finally no LSU basketball or Christmas or the freaking bowl game in the way. We're back to our normal time. Uh, guys, if you're watching tonight, please make sure to hit that like button. Of course, Fire 3449 beat us to it tonight. Hit the like button, everybody. Uh, Call Me Larry claims he was the second person to hit it. So I appreciate you, Larry. You even beat me to it. Here, I'll go give it a like real quick. Smash. Um, So, yeah, y'all make sure to hit the like button. Get the analytics rocking and rolling. Just a little note here. uh, Mike was fighting the flu and some nasty stuff last week. He was out. He's still feeling kind of down, though. So we'll see. I I expect he'll have his show Wednesday night. Um, Our last show for the year here, as y'all know, this is the football show. We only roll for six months out of the year once, you know, show you know news starts to slow down we take a hiatus and we don't return until august our final show is going to be february 8th so that'll be after national signing day we'll of course have some news uh including dominic mckinley hopefully um (laughs) he had a visit this weekend so we'll make sure to talk about that uh, we'll also be talking about LSU hiring Kevin Peoples. We didn't get a chance to talk about that last week. The news hadn't break and broken. It's an, a very interesting hire given the Bo Davis news already there. And of course, we're going to touch on LSU's defensive uh, back coaching search. Uh, is Corey Raymond still the guy? I'm hearing uh, some other names actually pop up here. Um, so we'll talk about all that, maybe some portal news. Uh, we're going to talk about C.J. Daniels, the Liberty wide receiver, pledges his commitment. Uh, and of course, the the vis the weekend of visitors that they had, who was there on the coaching staff, who was there on the players. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about portal uh, and um, uh, targets and, and recruiting targets. There's not much news going on there, but we'll touch on it for sure. Zach, what's going on, man? Not too much. I know. Uh, I know. I missed last week. wasn't uh, wasn't feeling too hot, but. We're back, feeling better, doing good. I talked on the phone with Mike last week too, so I know he's uh starting to get a little bit better now. But last week, man, he was he was going through it. So you know, yeah. both of us were were feeling pretty rough, but feeling good. Um, busy last couple of days, but feeling good. Time to get back to it. Well, uh, fire three three nine nine three four four nine says, uh, "Glad you're feeling a lot better." Uh, it, and guys, we're gonna do a lot of comments tonight. So if you got something interesting you want to talk about. Get it out there, man. If I see an interesting comment, I'm going to throw it up there. It's just kind of the nature of the business of Brian Kelly is taking extra time to evaluate staff right now. He He's pretty – if y'all remember when he got hired, he talked a lot about how particular he is going to be on the staff uh, and hiring people. So uh, he's taking his time. I have no big news that y'all haven't talked about ad nauseum, it, just being honest there. So – We'll talk about whatever y'all bring forward to us tonight. We're going to have some fun with the show tonight. Uh, Like Gerard Gurley wanting to know if I froze to death. No, not yet. Uh, But we are expecting snow here in the next three hours. So, man, as soon as it snows, I I have a big decision to make. Do I wake up my son for his first snow day or do I let him sleep? Mm -mm. Like, I feel like you have to at that point. You have to, absolutely. You can't let him sleep through his – because I don't know if the snow will last by the time he wakes up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I can't let him miss out on that. He's not going to know what's going on. you got to wake him up. But you got you got to bring the kid out for that. Um. So, hey, maybe we pay the price and we can't get him back down, but, you know, hey. Maybe maybe my mistake here is listening to the guy who doesn't have kids. Maybe that's just a rookie move. <laughs> um. David Lawrence, by the way, way before the show started here, woohoo! Another episode of Tiger Bait. Who's going to be the next football coaching hire? Who's the front runner for defensive backs coach? Feedback on Carl Scott. Well, I can tell you, Carl Scott's name is in the mix uh, for sure. Uh, but 
at first it seemed like Corey Raymond was just the obvious pick. But what I'm hearing is LSU. First off, I'm hearing Brian Kelly's being very selective with this. He understands how important this hire is and he wants to get it right. He wants to get this right more than he wants to have a coach in place ready to hop on these portal guys, you know, which there's, there's some names in the portal. Um, Y'all have already mentioned one in the comments, Um, but I'm hearing TJ rushing from Texas A&M is a name to watch there, which, you know, Texas A&M didn't have the season that they wanted, but they still had a top 10 defense this year. Uh, so that that would be a good name to bring in. Of course, he's familiar with Jordan Gilbert. Um, but it, 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 are you surprised at how long this and how quiet this defensive back coach search has been? Brian Kelly's a pretty he's pretty good when it comes to like keeping things close to the vest. Um, obviously, we saw Blake Baker and all these other coaching hires kind of like come to light pretty quickly. Uh, but when it comes to the you know defensive backs, you know coaching search, yeah, it, it's been pretty quiet over the last couple of weeks and. Really, the Corey Raymond thing. There's a lot of feelers. There's a lot of things that you have to, you know, look at here. His, you know, he, his the production hasn't been that good from his players over the last couple of years and stuff. And during his last year with LSU, it was a pretty tough spot. So there are hurdles yeah. that you have to jump for him. Obviously, he's about as elite of a recruiter as it comes in, in college football. He's he's fantastic, but on field production is something that also needs to be looked at. So yeah, I mean, Corey Raymond will continue to be a hot name that takes headlines. And like you said, I, I completely agree with the TJ rushing, you know, call as well. I think that's somebody that's going to continue. To, to be a, another hot name on the market. But look, it, it, I think a, I think the hire is going to come sooner rather than later, especially as, you know, you have transfer portal players and stuff that, that we want to secure. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks. It definitely will. I, I am a little surprised at how long it's taking. I, I thought that, you know, they would want to move very quickly. Of course it's been, Man, how long has it been? Is it? It feels like three weeks, but it's probably be, it's only January fifteenth. So it's been about nine days since uh, they let go of the staff there. Um, the reality is, yeah, you know, you're you're there. There's going to be some recruits you probably have missed on. There's some recruits you're going to miss on, but there's a saying in in coaching decisions: you don't make a decision on a coach for a recruit. You just don't. You never, ever, ever do, never, ever should, because the coaches should have a longer lasting impact and the coaches impact, like each coach you hire impacts about how well a dozen or so players play. Agreed. So you can see why the coaches are ultimately more important than the players because the coaches bring in the players and develop the players and all that good stuff. So watch out for, uh, for, for one of those guys to come in. Um, We'll see. I, I thought it was a done deal with Corey Raymond. I really did, but I'm I'm not hearing that anymore. In fact, I I would say at this point it's probably more likely that TJ Rushing comes in because if it were Corey Raymond all along, and what would the holdup be? He doesn't have a job at Florida. My first thought went to, well, he's nego- remember how like uh, Les Miles. But right before he got the Kansas job, settled his buyout with LSU for like four hundred thousand dollars or something like that. My first gut instinct went to, okay, well, if he takes a new job and his new job pays as much or more than his old job, then your buyout becomes nothing because that's how buyouts work. You only have to pay them until they land a new job, um, and 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 if that new job is underpaying, you have to make up the difference for what you owe them. So. My thought was, okay, well, he's just trying to negotiate whatever buyout. He's trying to get a quick check, and Florida's calling him out, saying, nah, we know why you're doing this. Uh, and then it, but that would be settled by now. That wouldn't stretch out this long if that well, truly I'll say this. going on. I'll say this on that. You know, obviously, everybody looks at it as one coach for the defensive backs type thing. Not every program goes on and gets a safeties coach and a cornerbacks coach, but – for LSU, from what I've heard from people kind of familiar with the situation, it's that they're going to look to get a cornerbacks coach and a safeties coach, not just one defensive backs coach. So kind of when you go about the process right now, you can kind of say Corey Raymond or TJ Rushing, or you could say Corey Raymond and TJ Rushing, because TJ Rushing has a specialty with safeties, and obviously Corey Raymond has a specialty with cornerbacks. Right. So at the end of the day, you could kind of, you could get both. You, you could get two fantastic Well, coaches, that would but- require – hold up, hold up. I'm glad you mentioned that, because mm-hmm. – 
you already brought in Kevin Peoples and Bo Davis. Yeah, so you're not afraid to to go out and you know get two guys to handle one position group, that being defensive back. So look, Brian Kelly, Scott Woodward, that this this whole athletic department has shown they're not scared to break the bank. They're not scared to no, they you know, write the checks, hand them a blank check, and say whatever you want, let's go. Um, so you you can see that happen with the defensive backs group here. So look, it could be Corey Raymond, it could be T.J. Rushing. You could bring in somebody else. There's a couple different options that they've been looking at as well, two or three other guys. So, look, at the end of the day, we, we can sit back here and say, oh, my goodness, is it going to be one or the other? But you're going to get two guys to handle your defensive backs unit for the foreseeable future. And who knows? Uh, TJ Rushing will be fantastic. Corey Raymond, from a recruiting perspective, will be fantastic. But you, you have all the – you know, you have the money to go out and get whoever you want. Right. So it's going to be exciting. And to what you were saying, I do think it's it's been taking quite some time. Um but I think you'll see something happen sooner rather than later. I, I would hope this week, but you know, again, you don't know the time frames anymore. Well, Woodward's not playing around. Not at when all. When it comes to getting this team right, he wants yeah. a championship football program and is willing to pay and raise funds to make that happen. Um, Completely agree. That being said, outside of Corey Raymond, other names to keep, of course, Seattle Seahawks defensive passing game coordinator. Carl Scott uh, that was mentioned in the comments as a guy to watch out for, but also Memphis defensive backs coach, Charles Clark. Keep an eye out for those names. We'll see. I'm interested to see. So at this point, because you now have a, an assistant defensive line coach, who's essentially going to be like an, like an edge rushing specialist, Jack mm-hmm. linebacker specialist. Love that because Brian Kelly, really said we need to fix this defensive line in a big way who are the best possible guys that can pull in uh and (laughs) i thought it was funny big game boomer you know he puts out his list not the best list in the world by any stretch but we're gonna agree with this one we're gonna agree with this one (laughs) number one on his list Mm -hmm. was kevin peoples and number two was Bo Davis. Yeah. Uh, and from everything up, both Missouri and Texas fans were devastated to see those guys go. And I think that speaks volumes that they were like, oh no. Yeah. We lost that guy. Texas, uh, I talked to some people in the know at Texas. They said Bo Davis was a big part of why Texas came back. So you're fixing your defensive line in a major way. The question then becomes because you added that extra coach, you either have to get a defensive backs coach who coaches both safeties and corners. Brian Kelly said in the past he prefers to split that up because whenever you don't split it up, there's wasted time because there's certain um, there's certain run protection, like like run stopping things that safeties have to know coming up from so deep that's just wasting your time when corners do it because corners don't have to step up and 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 fill in the box in the same way that safeties do so he prefers to split that up he split that up in notre dame the question then be then becomes do you pull a coach from the offensive staff and i haven't even thought this out in my head how that would look because Joe Sloan would be your quarterbacks and OC or, or something of that sort. Cortez Hankton receivers, and he would also uh, uh, move up to um, coaching uh, a co-OC possibly, right? Um, which is yet to be settled. Um, then you've got Brad Davis coaching offensive line, but then who coaches tight ends? Am I missing thing, someone? Denbrock was your tight ends coach when he was Denbrock here. Denbrock was so your tight ends coach, right? You, you could either go out and get another guy to coach that position group, which is no. You well, you're out of on field coaches, is my point though. But yeah, I completely hear what you're saying. But you, you still have a couple different openings that you can work with. Uh, considering, I'm, I mean, who knows what happens with OC? I would love to see Joe Sloan obviously take yeah. over, right? Take over that. I'm not gonna. They, nothing's been revealed yet. You just don't know. But you, you still have three openings left, and you could very well go out and get you know two guys. You, you, the openings are there, pretty much. They're there. Well, 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 you you have one opening on offense and one opening on defense, right? Right now. I think you have three left. Why would you have three left? Who am I missing here? Because you brought in two coaches for defensive line. You brought in three coaches, right? You fired four on defense and you lost one on offense, right? Do you have so a linebacker's fine. coach? Because Matt House is gone? Well, but uh, that was one coach, though. Uh, and linebacker's coach will almost certainly be Blake Baker. Although Blake Baker could also coach safeties. He was the safeties coach at Missouri. My point is, I- I'm pretty sure you have two spots left to fill. And someone correct me if you've done the math here. But you lost five coaches. You've brought in three. I do know that much. Um, 
So it's going to, it's going to get interesting to see how he, how Brian Kelly decides to split this up being that he brought in a position for a coach that did not exist before. Something's got to give somehow, some way the NCAA only allows you to bring in so many coaches. All right. We have a super chat. I'm going to get to that. And then we're going to go into our first ad break and we will be right back. Uh, Joel Robinson. Thank you for the nine 99 super chat. Very excited about the new defensive coach hires, but we need some players ASAP. Any options in the portal for the defensive line? Uh, Bama had a kid enter the defensive portal and almost as fast as he went out, he went to Syracuse. So I don't know about you. I don't have any portal guys on my radar for the defensive line right now. Do you, Zach? I think at this point in time, there could be like two or three guys that emerge over the next couple of weeks, especially yeah. considering Bo Davis is such an elite recruiter. But I think this is going to be the type of thing where you look at the second portal window in the spring and you kind of see what you have, see what you're right. working with. And obviously it's slim pickings that you have right now on the on the current roster. But I think it's going to be the type of thing where you wrap up spring ball, look at that second portal window around that late April to May yeah. time slot, and you, you go out there and you try to get some defensive linemen. And I think you try to get two or three because – at this point, you're kind of battling the scholarship count. You know, you don't, you only have so many openings right. left. So some people will leave through the transfer portal in the spring from LSU, open up some more roster spots. And then from there, you can start to attack that defensive line position. And I, I think that's where you're going to see a lot of new targets emerge during that window. So for right now, no, I don't I agree think with you. I have very many names, but I think you, you start to see one or two maybe develop over the next couple of weeks and all signs will shift towards that, you know, late spring window. Um, I'll throw one caveat out there though. Coaches, the coaching carousel as head coaches accept new jobs, their portal for their team opens and, uh, it opens for 30 days, right? So Alabama, then Washington, then Arizona, you get what I'm saying? Like as these head coaching coaches are moving on, those are three teams right there. Uh, whose rosters are subject to be rated. I mean, that's that's the era we're in right now. So I, I think that those are things to keep an eye on, but I think I honestly think for now it's going to be quiet. Now, Alabama has Desmond Ricks who entered the portal, which thank you for the super chat, Joel Robin, Robinson. Um, that's a that's an interesting one. You remember what he said when he committed to Alabama on signing day? That was unbelievable. That was hilarious. That he was hilarious. said tigers by mistake and then i mean alabama <laughs> so he said the wrong team and lsu was high i mean high on this kid uh pushing really hard for him turned out to be a massive miss for lsu as, as they could have really used him last year but um i don't I, I don't think this is i think he was just young at alabama this year he showed promise uh, as a true freshman i don't think this is a he couldn't play issue. He wasn't good enough issue. So that'd be a big one to get. The biggest problem with trying to get him, which I, I do know LSU is trying to get him on campus this uh, the, soon, right? When, as this week. Well. The, the, the goal is to get him on campus at some point before this week ends. He's going to yeah. visit here, Texas A&M, and I heard another school is going to come in the mix as well. But the, the goal right now is to get Desmond Ricks you know, in Baton Rouge on campus for an official visit at some point this week. I, yeah. I, I think that's going to – you know, come to come to light pretty soon. Um, just the specific day is what they're still trying to work out. But even just to get him on campus for for a visit is is impressive enough. That would be a game changer. Yeah, at, at the defensive back position because you're talking about you brought in Jair Brown, uh, Jarden Gilbert, Jair Brown, and Eli Ricks. I'm sorry, Desmond Ricks. Eli Ricks is playing tonight, by the way. For the he Eagles, is. he got smoked. Yep. smoked on that tight end crossing route. Are the Eagles still up, by the way? Do you have that game playing in the background? Mm -mm. Oh, I try not to put anything on. Over the there. Eagles were down 10-0 when I when I tuned out, man. I, I, I tell you, man, they went for 10-1 to killing everybody. To they, They've lost 5-6. I just don't know what's going on at Philly, man. It's wild. But anyways, um, Desmond Ricks uh, would be a big, big deal. I mean – Quite frankly, based on talent alone, I mean, he's like a plug-and-play starter if, if your defensive backfield looks anything like it did last year. Your one problem is, who's going to coach him? Who's going to recruit him to come to school here? Obviously, Blake Baker is going to have to do 
a lot of heavy lifting there and Brian Kelly to say, hey, look, we don't have a defensive backs coach right now, but trust me, we're going to hire someone really good. You're going to love them. So uh, Brian Kelly neither needs to move quickly there or he needs to just have this kid take a leap of faith on you. Yeah, um, I, I will say this, though, on that subject. Remember, you, you and I were talking a couple of weeks ago. It was right before New Year's. Um, it was that show right before then, and we were both sitting there talking about, you know, the whole Dominic McKinley saga, and it was when you had said, you right. know, how he's going to be taking that official visit on January, I believe it was 12th. Obviously, it was this previous weekend. So that you said that a couple of weeks before it came to light, and, you know, we were sitting here talking about, like, well, what does the visit matter if you don't have a coach? Who's recruiting him? That there was the in-home visit. Like, what's the deal there? Like, yeah. who's going in there and doing that? Um, and obviously, I, I think it was pretty much understood in-house that Bo Davis was going to be the guy that, you know, you kind of handed a blank check and said, put your number on this. This is how bad we want you. So I think Dominic McKinley knew that you were going to be getting a coach of Bo Davis's caliber. So fast forward to this current situation with somebody like Desmond Ricks. It's not necessarily a long shot to get somebody like Desmond Ricks. Um but it's going to be a challenge to get him. Sure. But what I'm trying to say is this, basically, when you have somebody like that of his caliber, I, I think it's pretty much understood that you have your cornerbacks coach or your defensive backs coach in place, or you have your two or three finalists in play, where you can right. sit back and tell the recruit, this is who you're dealing with. These are the guys that you could be potentially be getting coached by. So I don't think it's the type of thing where he walks into the room and it's like, who's recruiting him or who's doing this, who's doing that. I think it's pretty much understood that there are two or three guys who are going to be coaching him and you just kind of talk about what each one can provide him because to get Desmond Ricks on campus, it doesn't just happen just because right. So I think there's a, pl a play or a plan in place. Well, and it would be a situation. Desmond Ricks was already previously comfortable with, with your, your campus, you know I mean? Yeah. One of the things is about the recruits when they get to the very end, any, any of the finalist schools, they're very comfortable with, right. And LSU was there already for him. So obviously that relationship already exists and stuff. So it's not like you're starting from ground zero, but you're right. It is a challenge. It's, it's very challenging to pull in a kid of his caliber without knowing who his position coach is going to be. Uh, yeah. Either Brian, like I said, either Brian Kelly needs to get to work and hire a defensive back. Man, if Texas A&M and, and LSU are the two schools, imagine hiring TJ rushing. That's that would almost like seal the deal for you mm -hmm. at that point. But um, anyways, LSU needs to either get to work on a coach or have a kid take a leap of faith. Regardless, you need to do an, uh, an excellent recruiting job uh, one way or the other, which by the way, when we get back from break, they did an excellent recruiting job this weekend with a five-star prospect on campus, Dominic McKinley, who, need to meet his needed to meet his new defensive line coach. Cause you got him on board without a defensive line coach. Uh, and then of course, uh, or actually, no, that was before the bowl game. It was the day before you lost your defensive line coach. Yeah. Okay. But you, you had an interim there anyway. So you kind of got him without a defensive line coach. And then of course we got to talk about CJ Daniels, the big wide receiver commitment out of Liberty. But first we're going to talk about celebrity theaters guys as y'all know celebrity theaters has stepped up as our title sponsor this year guys celebrity theaters is louisiana's only locally owned and operated theater with locations in baton rouge and ruston because they're locally owned and operated you're guaranteed to see a clean facility better pricing superior customer service state-of-the-art technology and of course baton rouge has the invigorating arcade with over 50 games in it guys it's the largest in town it's got a bar featuring wine beer and frozen drinks oversized leather reclining seats and of course the dolby atmos 3d sound system complete with the largest screen in baton rouge and of course, guys, I got to talk about the artwork behind me that y'all see every show. It, guys, it's Spectre Sports Art. Guys, he's been kind enough to partner with us this year. You see the line behind us, spectresportsart.com backslash the bayou. That's because he's got a bunch of LSU and Louisiana themed artwork. You see a small sample of it behind me. You can see it all right there. Uh, guys, the art he creates is guaranteed to catch the eye of any Tiger fan. Uh, it's the details that are really going to hold your attention. You may recall the infamous Smoke and Joe painting from 2020. He's followed that up with five new pieces, including the Tiger Stadium, uh, Coach, Bo, Co Coach O and Joe Burrow. Uh, he's got Drew Brees, Dylan Cruz, and Tommy Tanks, which I do have a little graphic here showing all this artwork. 
Guys, the coolest part about this artwork, the athletes themselves buy these works and show them off proudly. I've always thought that was the coolest part. This isn't like some chat GPT art or whatever you see online. Guys, this is the good stuff that the athletes themselves are loving. Okay, the Joe Burrow piece, that's in his parents' living room. Dylan Cruz bought the original and hung it in his man cave. So, of course, very good stuff. Make sure to use the link in the description of this video to check out the entire Bayou collection. Make sure to use our exclusive promo code TIGERBAIT10 at checkout for 10% off your first set order. Guys, you're not going to be disappointed with this purchase. All right, let's get back into it. Um, this weekend, LSU had a recruiting weekend that was important, but not much in terms of like acquiring new talent is more retaining your current your guys on board because um dominic mckinley five-star defensive tackle who has not signed his letter of intent yet was on campus and from what i'm hearing all three of the new defensive coaches were there too and it was kind of his final shopping around so to speak like like, let me make sure that this decision is right, you know, because, I mean, he knew Bo Davis from recruiting him at Texas, but he just wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was in place and he liked it. And from what I'm hearing, his decision was all but assured and that book is shut. I mean, at this point of the players you're bringing in, given your current roster, Dominic McKinley has to be probably the most important player you're bringing in this year, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Dominic McKinley is necessarily, necessarily this day one immediate impact guy, but look, if he has a fantastic spring working out, doing doing what he needs to do, and then comes to LSU over the summer and, you know, continues to hit that stride, I mean, who says that he can't come in and, you know, make that immediate impact? Because I'm not going to contradict myself and say he can't, but, you know, I, I certainly think if he has a productive next couple of months, then once he's on campus over the summer, carry that in fall camp. I mean, right. Who says he can't come in and, and take a couple of snaps during some big key moments well, and he needs him. So let me ask I, you I this. Really think that obviously, you know, this is, this is definitely one of the biggest signings that you have. He's a five-star high four-star on some sites. So it, it's about impressive as a get of a get as it gets. Let me, let me, so I agree with you on the development. I'm not sure he'll be ready, but that doesn't mean LSU won't use him. And Agreed. if he's not a guy who's playing early on. Cause I'm assuming LSU would use at least four defensive tackles, right? Oh yeah. Who, who is playing if he's not, they exactly. would have That's to the hit point. the pole really hard. Right now. I mean, you're only working with, you know, Jacoby and Guillory. You just got shown Washington, the Juco transfer. He got on campus over the weekend. Yeah. Um, he joined, you know, 13 other early enrollees to make it to campus. And like I said, Jacoby and Guillory, Jalen Lee, I mean, you and you named all the returners just there. That's it. You got That's slim pickings, man. You, I know. you got slim pickings. So, you know, to get somebody like Dominic McKinley on campus, it, it, it's just this weekend, man. Like, yeah. it, in my opinion, it was important to get him on campus when all of his, you know, the guys in his recruitment class are making it their way to move in. So I think it was just an important piece to get him on campus. See Bo Davis, Blake Baker, Kevin yeah. Peoples, see who he's going to be working alongside. And um, Coming back to what you said, though, yeah, I mean – not a lot of returning depth. You're going to have to hit the portal. And Dominic yeah, McKinley, yeah. even if he's not ready, he's going to have to be ready. He's going to have to be prepared to step into those big moments because of the lack of depth that you have. So, yeah, I mean, who's to say that he doesn't actually get in and make a you know make a little bit of an impact? I, I would be shocked if he doesn't, unless they hit the portal hard. Agreed. With Completely this current agree. roster, I'd be shocked if he's not your fourth defensive tackle. I think, of course, Jalen Lee and Jacoby and Guillory are going to get your four, first looks. Um, I think Jacoby and Guillory is going to be your guy who is, is your best defensive tackle currently. Um, I could see him competing to be your second starting defensive tackle. I really could. Um, I'm also interested to see if any of these defensive ends bulk up and slide inside. Uh, who's the Santa Ma defensive end from a year ago, the three-star kid? Um, Dylan Carpenter? Yeah, Dylan Carpenter is a kid I'm really high on with a mm -hmm. frame that's certainly big enough, but he would have to add a lot of weight because he is a, a true defensive end yeah. size last I saw, but that's a kid i just curious about. I'm curious if, if he could slide in. Um, but uh, I, I think someone will have to, if you only have five defensive tackles on roster next year, someone will be forced to whether they want to or not. Uh, and if they're that defensive end, if you're going to have guys who 
aren't starting, you might as well put on some weight and see if you can get some reps on the inside. Because, I mean, the odds are that with five defensive tackles on roster and um, a lot of them being young and new to your team and one of them having not really played at all this year in Jalen Lee, uh, the odds that you get two high-quality SEC players out of that is pretty low right now. Just statistically speaking, I'm not – telling you that none of these guys can do it but just playing your odds uh it's 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 pretty low that you get two just stud defensive tackles so it is looking like that position could be a problem that's why i do believe that i think some i think the portal will i'd be shocked if you don't land at least one guy in the portal sure let's see if we got uh here any any interesting comments here before we move on uh, Chevis Jackson, the Marshall defensive back coach. There's been a lot of buzz on him, but it, it's been quiet. Um, been pretty quiet, uh, around him. Uh, someone wants you to talk about Carl Scott, the, the Seattle defensive backs coach. You got, you got anything special on him? Not too, too much. Not too, too much. Not I too mean, much. The, you know, we're talking about an NFL quality coach. Right. Uh, defensive backs weren't necessarily a massive problem for the Seahawks, but they are losing their coach this year and Pete Carroll. Um, but it's not like he was coaching up the Legion of Boom over there. Uh, let's see here. Reaper seems to say we have three openings still. Okay. Well, then I guess my math isn't mathing somehow, some way. Um, I mean, yeah, and Chance Babin says cornerback safeties, tight ends, but I, I'm not sure that that's accounting for the extra defensive line coach, uh, especially, I mean, unless Kevin Peoples is not going to be an on-the-field coach, which they have not officially announced his role. I can't imagine a world where he goes from being such a stud on that Missouri coaching staff to off the field like an analyst position. No way, right? I don't know. That is a tricky. That is kind of a tricky situation, honestly. I didn't really think about it in that uh, in that perspective. Uh, Pearl River Fury wants to know what about Tommy Reese from Alabama, the, their OC. Well, um, he, he's certainly a guy who's going to be available if LSU wants him, and Brian Kelly does have a relationship with him. <sighs> Are you impressed with him as a coach? I'm just. Uh, I'm not too nuts about his offenses. I think he's a coveted guy. I think a lot of people want him. I just know that when I'm sitting back and looking at who I want to fill the LSU offensive coordinator slot, it's hard for me to not look at Joe Sloan and be like, I want that to be the guy. So to answer your question, am I impressed with Tommy Reese? I wouldn't say it blows me away. It doesn't yeah. like move me. It doesn't move the needle. Um, but it doesn't go to say that he's a bad coach by any means. He's just my eyes. I have tunnel vision when it comes to, you know, Joe Sloan taking over that offensive coordinator slot. So I um, have it too, man. Kind of different. Kind I, of different. I would rather take a shot on a guy I know is an elite, bright, and up-and-coming mind, Joe Sloan. I know that Joe Sloan – and I've seen Joe Sloan coordinate an offense that looked really good in the ball game, minus, minus we'll call it five-eighths of Malik neighbors because he was out after the first yeah. quarter, um, minus the Heisman winner, right? And that offense didn't miss a beat, dude. It was looking good. I'd much rather stick with him than go a Tommy Reese route. But man, I'm hoping uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that he did, that that doesn't end up being the decision, and he comes in and makes me look really stupid. But I, I am mm -hmm. not high on Tommy Reese personally. But the hire does make sense, and of course, sometimes continuity and familiarity can breed success, right? Uh, and that might be the situation with him and Brian Kelly. Um, I <laughs> uh, got another super chat here, dude. Why is nobody talking about the saints defensive back coach specifically safeties cat is churning them out. Um, it's, it's rare that, I mean, not all, a lot of NFL coaches don't want to leave, which by the way, do you, I, I don't even know the saints defensive back coach off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of him. Let's see. But, I mean, the Saints defense have been – I mean, it's carried the team this year. We've seen how atrocious – So offensive. <laughs> Especially the first three-fourths of the season because the last four games, Derek Carr really was lighting it up. But that Derek Carr and beat Carmichael offense was just 
rough, Tough. rough this year. Yeah. Um, but th- th- that being said, a lot of times NFL coaches don't want to go coach college unless it's for like a big time pay increase yeah. or something like that. Um, b- because they got to recruit, you know what I mean? Like, like Joe Brady took That's his big point break opportunity here at LSU. He knew he could be elevated to the offensive coordinator. Right. Um, and he b- still bolted for the NFL. Some, some guys like if you like recruiting and all that good stuff, it's a grind. It's more work. It is more work to be a college football coach than it is to be an NFL coach. So a lot of guys like going uh, NFL instead. Um, and, and one of the reasons why Carl Scott is a candidate, but I, I wouldn't consider a coach on the Saints defensive staff as strongly a candidate is simply because uh, Pete Carroll, uh, you know, he stepped down, got pushed out effectively. I mean, he, he's taking a back office job, right? I, I, I hear he was kind of pushed off, but you know, they're, they're not going to ever call that a firing or whatever, but anyways, he's leaving the Seahawks. So you've got some coaching turmoil there. That's why that door is opened for him. And of course, Drew Boogie, Drew Boogie brings up a good point here. Brian Kelly did try to bring Tommy Reese with him from Notre Dame. That's a fact. Yeah. That is true. That was his first call for OC was, let's see if we can have the same OC. So again, Brian Kelly obviously respects Tommy Reese. Nick Saban obviously respects Tommy Reese. Maybe Preston and Zach are the dumb ones. <laughs> like, like maybe listen to the guys who have won a combined 500 football games mm-hmm. and don't listen to us bozos. I just don't like the offenses I've seen out of them. I just don't. I don't like the offense he called his final year at Notre Dame when Brian Kelly left. Uh, I don't like the offense he called at Alabama this year. I didn't like that um, they pulled away from Jalen Milrow and went to – Tyler Buckner for that USF game. And yeah, obviously that guy was not ready to, and I know that's a Tommy Reese thing he's pushing for. Cause that was Tommy Reese's guy. That's the guy he brought in from the portal. Obviously Tyler Buckner couldn't play. He, he wasn't cut. And, and how you not see that he's that atrocious in practice. I don't know, but they should not have, have made that. Um, mm. But the the respect that Tommy Rees has with some of football's greatest, college football's greatest minds, speaks volumes. Vaughn Van Bennett, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a little trouble read here. Got the snow brain on tonight, guys. <laughs> um, Coach Baker can coach. Yes, he can, and he coached them very well in Missouri. He was the defensive coordinator and safeties coach. So. Maybe that would behoove LSU to um, go with a defensive backs coach. And then when they have to break up and do the safeties only portion, they just move Blake Baker over there and let Kevin Peoples do some drill with the linebackers. I don't know. I haven't talked to Brian Kelly. I'm just spitballing some some possibilities there. But I hope Blake Baker coaches linebackers because I don't know if you were paying attention in 2021 when you were over there at the University of Lafayette, Louisiana, but man, he did a great job with the linebackers here, man. He made Damone Clark look unbelievable. Uh, All American. Uh, It was unbelievable. And Damone Clark, by the way, I've never thought of Damone Clark as like a, like, super high talent guy. Like he doesn't run a four, three forty. He does have good size and all that good stuff. Um, but he was a three-star recruit and I, I never, but he played just very well, fundamentally sound elite tackler. Uh, I thought the same thing about the, the other line, but Michael Baskerville, same thing I thought about him. I mean, and he played very well under Blake Baker. So for I mean, that yeah, reason, he made, he made Damone Clark a Buckus award finalist caliber, uh, yeah. you know, football player. So, I think if you let Blake Baker take over the linebackers, obviously, um, I think you're going to get a lot out of your guys. You have Harold Perkins, you have Greg Penn coming back. Like you, you have a lot of significant weapons that can come in and make an impact. So, yeah, I certainly think if, if you have Baker, will probably coach your linebackers. I think if what if, if that happens, you're, you're in a good spot moving forward. Brandon Rees, that's Tommy Rees's cousin. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. Pretty sure it's spelled different. Uh, let Baker coach the linebacker. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. 
Um, let's see here. Phil title with a long comment. I didn't read it before I put it up there, but I'm gonna take a leap of faith. You seem like a good guy, Phil. We will know soon, but Corey's player performance has been poor for four years. That's a good point. And Corey was fired before the end of the season and Blake Baker coached with Corey and they haven't hired him. That's a very good point. And that's why I think it's actually trending away from Corey Raymond right now. Um, let's see in 2020. Corey Raymond's defense ranked dead last in the country, gave up 450 yards per game. Um, and it was a COVID year. It's a wacky year, no doubt. And LSU was just returning so much players and coaching. And it was just a wacky year, but still everybody else was having a wacky year and you ranked last in the country, and you had Mississippi State. So who was the quarterback for Mississippi State who came in and just <laughs> – Annihilated six, us? Um, 636 yards. he SEC, got benched like two weeks Like later. the next week. Yeah, yeah, right. I can't even remember his name, but K.J. Costello. There it is. Boom. K.J. Costello. How about that one from the noggin? Um, Torched us. 636 oh yards. And it was just a very like like you kept on running man defense. You couldn't run any zone to help yourself out, and they literally didn't even try to run the ball because the passing worked so well. Uh, and then he gets benched two weeks later because he sucks. So that guy broke the SEC passing record on you. So that is a major mark against Corey Reagan. The next year at LSU, I believe the defense it improved by 100 yards per game. You remember the 2021 defense did have its moments, but we're ultimately talking about a seven loss team and they ranked like 78 80th, something like something that like in pass that. defense. It was it was not good, but it wasn't just as as atrocious as it previously was. Florida, one year forward, of course Florida's got a rebuilding job. Your boy, Billy Napier running the show over there, but he had his hands full as, as every coach does in this era of the transfer portal in IL where you, you, you get a new team. You have to rebuild the team. Just, just start, that's the way it is. Well, 87th was the defensive rank of Florida, right? And then this year they improved a little bit, but not the kind of strike. It was like 75th, something like that. Um, so, yeah, four years of your defense where out of 130 teams, you're ranking in the bottom half. And those two teams you're coaching at are LSU and Florida. Based on the last four years alone, the Corey Raymond hire is absurdly poor on the field. Now, he's recruited some top-notch defensive backs during that time. Eli Ricks was, was a guy who signed in 2020, right? Uh, and before that, we, I, I, you already know the positive accolades with Corey Raymond. Uh, and I, I was talking to some guys, some of his former DBs, and they just rave about how good and awesome Corey Raymond is. Um, and, you know, we, we, we know the guys he's developed and recruited at LSU. The legacy is immense. But to Phil Title's credit, the last four years have been lackluster. And, and that's, that's to put it mildly. <laughs> only 450 yards game size. So that was only one year. That's funny. Uh, That's um, funny. Kent Jones says he's glad you're feeling better. Are, are you fully over it? Thank you, Kent. We're getting there. Feeling a little bit better. Um, yeah. I'm not in the same boat as Mike. I know Mike. Uh, he was. He called me. He was telling me he's lost like eight to ten pounds. Man, he's been. Oh yeah. He's been. Uh, he's been going through it. But yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better this week for sure. It must have been all that uh, semaglutide he was taking from uh, the the clinic we were we were running commercials for. What was it? Uh, Drip IV. Yeah, there we go. They they stopped running commercials on this show, so oh, it is what it is. Uh, let's see here. He had Stingley and Ricks. Well, I mean, he also got Stingley and Ricks, but yeah, on that 2020 team, man. Can we talk about that 2020 defensive backfield had Derek Stingley Jr. sometimes? Yeah. When he felt like it. Oh, and, barely, yeah. And Eli Ricks, and they they still just were were last in the country in passing defense. You just you don't expect that. That that's uh, ugh. let's see here. Reaper 08. You need a good pass rush to have a good defense. We have been lacking lately. There's no doubt on that, and currently, I think the coaching will improve dramatically. I don't see that your roster has improved that dramatically. Do you, do you agree with me on that? Completely agreed. I think uh, one of the struggles this last season 
was your personnel. I, I think the defense struggled because there weren't necessarily enough SEC caliber guys on the field. It's hard to be a true freshman and play in the SEC, man. And when you're relying on, you know, youngsters like Javion Toviano, Ashton Stamps, Jeremiah Hughes, and you're relying on these youngsters to handle, you know, a secondary where you're going up against some very talented wide receivers, it, it, it's very tough. So, um, look, I think personnel is an issue. I think it's going to remain an issue for a little bit. But if you can bring in coaches to come in and develop your players a little bit better, um, it, it sets you up for a fantastic future. And I, I'm really excited now to see what players like JV and Toviano, Jeremiah Hughes, and Ashton Stamps can do going to year, going into year two within the program because – now they're comfortable. They, they played in some big-time SEC games, and they got that experience underneath their belt. So I think those three guys specifically are going to be some guys that can really take a big jump this offseason and then factor in the player development coaches that you have and the system that Blake Baker's going to bring in, the scheme that he brings in. I, I think it's going to set you up for more success, but certainly the players and, and the personnel and, and stuff like that will remain an issue. But, look, it's going to be a work in progress. Rome wasn't built in a day. and I, I think you give this defense a little bit more time, and they can hit their stride sooner rather than later. Well – Let's just put it like this, though. This defense needs to take a big step forward. Uh, it's it's not that hard to go from 105th ranked defense in the country to 50, 60, 70th. Like, show, take a major step forward mm-hmm. because if you don't, this team is in trouble in a big kind of way. And there's a lot of pressure to get that right because you've got this monster 2025 recruiting class coming, but none of those boys are locked in. They they could all if they see you go five and seven they they out of here right nothing matters till you put pen to paper man so I, yeah. I completely agree with that take I Absolutely. do think a season like eight and four or nine and three again you'll be fine they understand yeah. what you're rebuilding but but you gotta you gotta show a pulse man you gotta show a pulse and by the way I think just based on what I've seen alone based on the portal guys they brought in based on the defensive coordinator they brought in based on the defensive line coaches. I'm I'm at I was at seven and five. I am at eight and four now. So that that's where I'm thinking. But there's a lot of dust to be settled before we even begin to discuss, you know, what a realistic record for next yeah. year is. But just know Brian Kelly's got a lot of work to do to earn <laughs> earn a, a, those, those eight wins or whatever next year. Cause right now it's not an eight win team. Right now, if they go out, they don't have a defensive back coach right now. They don't have an offensive coordinator right now. You know, they have two returning defensive tackles right now. So uh, they got some work to do. Anyways, guys, let's talk about our friends at Koala Insulation, guys. Guys, the team at Koala Insulation in Baton Rouge is your residential commercial energy efficiency experts. The approach is Koala provides not only help reduce your energy bills and maintain a more comfortable living environment, but can also help reduce airborne energy allergens, water condensation issues, wear and tear on your HVAC systems, and even lengthen the life of your roof and shingles. The Koala team provides existing homeowners with a doctor's diagnosis of your home's energy efficiency and can offer several strategies to help you stay more comfortable and save more money on energy bills at all year long. The Koala has the Koala team has the capacity to tackle large spray foam projects at new construction while being available to help everyday homeowners with get some relief from Louisiana's from South Louisiana's extreme weather like the snow we're seeing tonight. That's what you expect in South Louisiana, of course. Uh, as an added bonus, most of Koala's projects qualify for federal income tax credits. Give Koala a call today at 225-457-1001 to schedule your free energy efficiency assessment and tell them you heard it from tigerbait.com to get 7% off your order. And guys, don't forget about the weekly specials at Celebrity Theaters. Guys, if you're looking to save money on your, your theater experience, guys, they've got you covered. Monday is Senior Savings Day, where it's $5 for all patrons over the age of 55. Tuesday is Bargain Tuesday, where you get discounted movie tickets and concessions for all. Wednesday, College Night, where admission for college students after 5 p.m. is $5. And the Baton Rouge location has half off that arcade with over 50 games in it. Thursday at the Baton Rouge location is Thirsty Thursday, where you have discounted bar items. All righty. And back to it. Defense jumping to 50 or 60 probably gets us nine and three again. Yeah. Right. Is that roughly right for you, Zach? That's spot on. That's exactly how I feel. I mean, 
Last season, you and I were talking about if this defense was in the 60s, this is a national championship caliber type team uh, just because your offense was so damn dominant. But yeah. obviously, you know, the likelihood that you have the number one offense in America next year is uh, slim. But you get that defense, like you said, Jared, to that 50 to 60 spot. Um, yeah, I think I think you could be sitting right around that nine and three, nine and three slot. Absolutely. Completely agree. What's frustrating. And, and look, I, I think people have reasonable expectations for the offense that they're going to be good. But you're just not going to see last year. Like that, that was the third best offense in SEC history. Right. Isn't it mind blowing to you? So LSU has two of the top three offenses in SEC history. And they both happened within the last five years. Like it, it's it's pretty both. unbelievable. Can you guess what the third one is? I want to say like an Alabama or Georgia, but I really just I a no team clue. that didn't compete for a championship. Let's let's give you a little hint there. Who did 2012 Texas A and M. Johnny Manziel. Okay. That, that's not that? as far-fetched as I would have thought, I guess. All three had the Heisman winner, by the way. Um, but just very interesting to see the those numbers. It, it is it is surreal to see that offense we thought we would never see again in Baton Rouge almost surfaced again this year. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think there's a sizable – there's a comfortable margin in between how good the 2019 team was and the 2023 team was on offense. I, I, I'm comfortable saying that they, they for sure were better in 2019, but on paper, the statistics are per game. They were neck and neck, but I think that once you unfold the layers, you start to see 2019's offense will truly never be touched. Agreed. Uh, and what's even more frustrating talking about that 50 or 60th ranked defense. Uh, if you have the 50th, if you have, let's talk about this. If you have Missouri's defense, this year at LSU. Do you realize that this team wins a national championship in a landslide? You lost it. You, 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 you hurt me when you said by a, in a landslide. Um, I think they certainly are college football playoff team. Um, and I guess I, I can't really see why they wouldn't win a natty, to be honest with you. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about this then real quick. So, so against Washington's defense which was pretty poor. How many points did Michigan score? 37 is that right? Something like that. Michigan Washington score. My only like rebuttal to that would just be that Washington's offensive line was so damn dominant. It's a Joe Moore award winner. Um and they LSU's defensive 15. line was not very talented this season. So, I mean, you kind of look at that Washington offense and it's like where does it stop? You know, you saw Ole Miss put 50 on LSU's head pretty effortlessly yeah. and I'm not saying Washington's monstrous like just significantly better than Ole Miss but I mean I sit back and I look at how just like the different levels and different layers whether it's the offensive line you know the battle in the trenches um I think that game against Washington would be a pretty unique matchup okay so I I really appreciate what Michael Penix did this year second best player in the country right Washington's offensive line and LSU's offensive line were a push this year like they were both Joe Moore finalists I think there's a big argument that LSU's probably was just as good, maybe maybe a tiny drop back more. But it right? just wasn't an undefeated team going to. Yeah, I can work with that. No, I mean it's fair. And and look, I, Cole Kublik, I think actually does a lot of like the research and film study to give that out. So I think that unlike other awards, like you actually do have a knowledgeable guy watching film who knows what he's talking about for it. That being said, uh, uh, it's still mostly a push, uh, dog. Missouri, let's say Missouri's defense holds them. I mean, Missouri had the 25th ranked defense. I think Washington's defense was was like 90th or something like that this year. That's wild. Yeah, it is wild to me. Um, but anyways, let's say LSU, let's say you shave 10 points off of that, right? So they score 24. Bro, n- ain't no one in the country was holding this LSU offense to under 24. I, and look, the LSU offense was getting better. As time went on. So, yeah, they had their one bad game, game one against Florida State. Bro, they were putting 40 on Michigan. I'm there's no, you. there's no argument that I can make for LSU's offense. Like, I know LSU's offense is going to go out and hang, you know, a 45 ball on whoever it is, honestly. It's just when I look at the defense, it's like, okay, if you hold, if you put up a 45 piece, what's yeah. stopping somebody like Washington – from putting up a 50 piece, you know, I well, was not Oxford. LSU's defense. LSU's defense wouldn't stop you from hanging 50, but we're playing a game where LSU has that Blake Baker defense. Yeah. And I, I get that. I get that. And like, hypothetically, I hear what you're saying. It's just like, man, that defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. And if, if we're talking about like this year, it's just like, it, it's, it's challenging. It, it's challenging. I really wonder what Blake Baker could have done 
um, with the personnel on the that. Well, that, well, that that's the other part of this. I'm just saying the Missouri defense. But if they had the Missouri defense, then if they had Missouri, then, yeah, defense I, I can work year. with what you're saying. Then I, I I see no reason why they wouldn't win in that. I think LSU wins by uh, ten points or more. I, I, okay. I honestly do. I honestly do. And, I, and you know what the greatest part about this take is? There's absolutely nothing you could ever do. It's all hypotheticals. No one I, can I, argue I, with I, this because it's all hypothetical. I am correct, and there's nothing you can do to mm-hmm. prove me wrong. That's what that's what I love about these conversations. So in addition to Dominic McKinley and CJ um goodness, what's the guy's last name again? I'm I'm dropping. CJ Daniels? CJ Daniels. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just, you know, CTE brain. You know how I am with names. LSU also did host Xavier Atkins and Caden Durham this weekend. Um, So, you know, solidifying those guys who aren't quite yet on campus. LSU does have 13 players in early enrollees on campus, by the way, and plus a Juco guy. So Sean Washington, he's on campus. Then you got Colin Hurley, Ethan Calloway, offensive line, offensive tackle, uh, offensive lineman, Kyrie Lee, Cohen E. Coles, and Joseph Cryer. So you've got one, two, three, four offensive linemen and a quarterback. Gabriel Welliford on campus. Ahmad Bro, the edge rusher linebacker. Uh, linebacker Tylen Singleton. Linebacker Devin Keys. Linebacker slash edge rusher Collage Cobbins. Cornerback PJ Woodland. Safety Deshaun McBride. And safety Joel Rogers. So 13 guys enrolled. It's, uh, it's pretty wild to me how many of these guys they're getting on to enroll early. Uh, and remember, um, who did we have on the show the other day that ended up committing? Why am I blanking on the, the uh, it was, um, Harlan Barry. Yeah. Um, he's going to be an early enrollee. And we were asking him about where does this process start? These coaches are doing a really good job of pushing these kids young to do what they need to do. Yeah. To remember group. the benefits of, uh, you know, enrolling early and stuff. And he gave a pretty yeah. good breakdown of it. Yeah, he did. He did. And I think he kept on missing what I was asking about. I, I really had to press him to be like, but where does it start? Is it the college coaches coming to you? Is it your dad? Is it? And it, it really does start with the college coaches telling the kids, hey, bring this back to your academic advisor. Here are the benefits. You should do it. And now because LSU has had some forethought on this, uh, we're seeing the dividends paid as you have 13 early enrollees. Plus, your allegedly six for six transfer portal guys will be on campus. So um, you're going to have 14, you're going to have 20 new faces for spring ball. 20, 20 new faces. It used to be back in the day, you would get like three, three guys yeah. enrolling for spring ball. So now to have those 20 new faces that get 15 practice to get activated into your offense, that's such a big deal, man. Such a big deal. Uh, We're going to do one last commercial break and we'll get to it. If you've got a comment, get it out there. We're going to try our best to get to it. So first I got to thank alumni hall for sponsoring our show this year. Hey, tiger fans. When you want to show your LSU tiger pride, alumni hall is your ultimate shopping experience. The best and largest selection of apparel for the whole family. Nike, Nike golf champion, Columbia, Peter Millar, Southern tide hats, Yeti gifts, accessories, and more. LSU students, faculty, and military receive 10% off in store every day. And you can earn cash back with their hall pass rewards program. Alumni hall located in Perkins Row or anytime at alumni hall.com alumni hall where tiger fans shop. And of course, guys, we've got to talk about celebrity Theaters, private events, guys. All celebrity theaters houses locate theaters house eight to ten auditoriums. Whether you're interested in hosting a birthday party, private movie screening, corporate meeting, arcade, or party, they've got the perfect facility to fit all your needs. The Celebrity Theaters is proud to offer birthday packages for children of all ages. Let them handle everything from movies to entertainment to setup to cleanup. They've got you covered. For more information or to book your party online, visit celebritytheaters.com backslash event. Or send them an email, events at celebritytheaters.com. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up the show here in just a bit. But if you got any comments, put them out there. We're going to get to them rapid fire. Uh, is Harlem Barry an early enrollee? I thought he was a 25 kid. He will be an early enrollee. That's what he told us on the show last week. He is a 2025 kid. Uh, you know who else is a 2025 kid? Ryan Williams. You see he decommitted from Alabama? Yeah, um, I believe he reclassified to 2024. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. Wow. I could be wrong on that. Um, okay. Honestly, but, I, don't, I don't remember seeing that, but, you know, the way this this 
this news moves, a lot of stuff goes down fast. And then mm-hmm. you're thinking that's a recent development? I think so. Um, and I can check that while, while you're doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll move on to a topic. Why, why don't you go fact check that real quick? Uh, I'd be happy to be wrong on that. That would be... <laughs> that would be things are going to move really fast for him. LSU will be in the mix for Ryan Williams, and he is decommitting um, because, uh, you know, Nick Saban is no longer their coach. It's a big deal. Um, but LSU is going to be in the mix with, like, I mean, everyone. Yeah, but I did- so on, on that, Preston, uh, he did reclassify to the 2024 class. And so okay. it's the type of thing where he backed off his commitment to Bama and you know, he's going to be seeking out all of his other options. And obviously he'll be on campus on Wednesday for an official visit uh, in Baton Rouge. So um, he's going to check out LSU, yeah. three, four other schools. He's going to take four visits this week before he eventually signs his national letter of intent on either February 7th, February 9th. He's going to sign yeah. during this later period. Um, so, yeah, now now you're kind of like working in crunch time for, for yeah. a player. Who, Boy, are you. It's not even a, it's, it's not even a need. It's kind of a want. Like, obviously yeah. he's a super talented player. You're, right. but you're so loaded at the receiver position. It's like, look, I mean – you have an embarrassment of riches, but this could be the cherry on top to that. So um, to get him on campus, it's obviously a really big deal. And he's been on campus before, you know, he visited in the fall alongside, you know, George McIntyre, one of the top quarterbacks in the country and, you know, a bunch of other players. So he came out and made that decision to reclassify around that November, December mark. And, you know, here we are, he, he reopened his recruitment and, you know, he's, he's back on the free agency market with LSU pushing and several other hot, hot names pushing, including Auburn and, you know, those types of schools. So, it could be the type of thing where it comes down to, you know, an Auburn LSU battle and we'll, we'll know more this week. And he's from Alabama. So yeah, he's from, he went to Sarah. And, and by the way, Alabama is still in the mix from what I'm understanding. Yeah. Like, like the Alabama is very much not out of it. I mean, Kalen DeBoer and that offense is appealing for a number of reasons, but it's not as appealing as Nick Saban as we, as Hell we yeah. can all imagine. Absolutely agreed. Um, so the, that would be just a massive cherry to add on top to this mm-hmm. 2024 recruiting class. And all of a sudden, all the grumblings about not having enough star power in this class starts to, I mean, you pulled in, you know, uh, Weston Davis, who's a five star on, on three, I believe. And then you pulled in yeah. Dominic McKinley, who's a consensus all five, uh, five star. And then you would pull in Ryan Williams, who's the number one receiver in the country, hypothetically. Uh, a lot of that, a lot of that scuttlebutt would would <laughs> dissipate pretty quickly. Uh, all of a sudden, LSU would be looking like a powerhouse in the recruiting industry there. Uh, so that'd be a big guy. You know who else would be big to pull in? Uh, Caleb Downs, their defensive back, who's like a stud, is considering enter the portal. But he made a public statement about he is thinking about it, but not that he's going to do it. So that's a little strange to me. Typically, guys. Are like, oh yeah, I'm all in. I'm bought in until boom. Yeah. They enter the portal. So that would be an interesting one. That would that would be you yeah. see a lot of Ohio State rumblings already, and he hasn't even put his name in the freaking <laughs> portal. So who knows what could happen with him, man. But yeah, SEC freshman of the year type deal in, in this year. I mean, that kid's a freak. I mean, that kid's I mean, amazing. you would have to figure NIL would play a huge, huge factor for 2024, man. I think NIL plays a role, plays a factor in just about every kid. Yeah. Kid, yeah, really. yeah, but I'm talking about a kid like that. You're going to have yeah. to imp- put some resources. Serious in. payday. Serious payday. Yeah, this isn't like, a, okay, let's scrape together 50 grand and make the kid happy. You know what I mean? Like, Multiply this is. That by 10. Yeah, I mean, this is like, <laughs> like, I mean, we're talking about a proven stud in the defensive backfield. So, yeah, LSU would have to get in there, but I also think LSU would have to clear I and clear out some NIL dollars. And I wonder where LSU stands given that these 2025 kids they're bringing in, and you know, slouches when it comes to some NIL dollars there. Well said. Well said. Uh, I, I can only imagine what kind of deal Bryce Underwood is, is having to get. Uh, I have no clue, but y'all all heard what Matt Rule said on it. <laughs> I mean, whoo. Well, guys, it's been an outstanding show. I appreciate y'all for joining us as always. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button to our channel. Our channel is rapidly growing. We appreciate all of your support. Um, and make sure to hit like on this video if you enjoyed seeing it tonight. Hopefully we'll have a lot more news to talk about on the defensive coaching search next week and maybe an offensive coordinator and and who knows what else. Uh, we will be doing this show live every Monday night at 8 o'clock until February 8th because, as you know, this is the football show and 
you know, it, it's going to get a little thin on football content. So we go on a hiatus until August when football news starts picking back up. So we will be back again uh, in August after that. So make sure to hit like on the show and subscribe to get our handful of shows left for the end of the year. Make sure to go follow Zach on Twitter at ZNaggy20. You can follow me at pguy 77 no underscore anymore. The, the handle was relinquished after a dozen years. I'm so excited. So y'all give me a follow on Twitter. If you have not already at P guy 77, thank y'all. Y'all have a great night and we will see you next week.